Kimberly Jessica reporting in live today from Hollywood, California. It is a wonderful Monday, and I am just in awe at how the month of May has totally just whisked by us, and it's almost June. Literally next weekend, we will be in the month of June. It makes me ask myself, oh my God, where is the time going? We're going into the sixth month of 2017. Time waits for no one. My birthday has already came and left this month. It's just unbelievable. It's a beautiful day outside. It's a great day to be alive. And I'm super excited today because, as you know, we always bring in guests that can help you live your best life. And I'm excited today because, you know, you guys know in my prior life, I was a psychotherapist. I had my master's in education from the School of Counseling Psychology, Cambridge College out in Boston, Massachusetts. And I worked as a shrink for a number of years, and I also worked in the special ed department with kids. And, you know, my job when I was a psychotherapist was to help people uh, develop coping mechanisms for depression, anxiety, and social stressors and things that contribute to any type of mental disorders, mental illnesses, emotional illnesses. And as you guys know, a lot of that stuff doesn't work. Now, I'm not taking away from the fact that, you know, people, uh, psychotherapy helps in many ways. It's always great to have a listening ear, but I like to walk out of there feeling better and knowing that I have a coping mechanism that not only helps me cope, but it helps me live a better life. And I'm excited today because, you know, I reached out across the pond, yes, folks, all the way over to my favorite country in the entire whole wide world, which is the UK, England to be exact, or London. You know, as a little girl, I always wanted to live in London, and I always felt like a, 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 a connection to England and London. And little did I know my ancestors had a connection to there, but more about that later. But I reached across the pond uh, and had an amazing uh, kin- kinship with an amazing young lady, and she has such a young spirit. And she basically learned a technique to help people heal from borderline personality disorder. I mean, how powerful and cool is that? And sadly, you know, her technique is not a known thing where, you know, everyone can have access to this. But now, here she is on WKIM Radio, where she is now sharing this technique and sharing her story on how she is uh, in Moving On Theater. Moving On Theater was established back in 2012, and back then it was called Moving On Theater Company. This this lady sets out to prove that age does not matter when it comes to expressing talent, and she has shown this true time and time again with her shows. Despite only being two years old, Moving On Theater has put on performance all over the country, including Edinburgh and Henley Festivals. And soon, London will be added to the list. Basically, Moving On Theater is supporting the therapeutic communities in the UK. What is therapeutic communities? Therapeutic communities where this young lady went to to help with her borderline personality disorder. It's, it's helping people all over the UK heal from depression, and many forms of mental illnesses without the use of drugs. Now, guys, if you ever watch TV and notice that, you know, you see this great medication that can help with, you know, basically, oh, it'll help you heal with depression, but, you know, the side effects are uh, anxiety, suicide, uh, loose stool, uh, loss of eyes. (laughs) I mean, the side effects are in itself not even worth taking the medication because you're going to want to leave the planet anyway. Well, this young lady went to therapeutic communities and basically therapeutic communities helps you heal your mental illnesses without the use of any drugs or medication. And basically to help raise the awareness of therapeutic communities, uh, moving on theater 
are they're releasing Jay Nay the Gayan, which I may have pronounced this completely wrong. I may have butchered it, but you know what? The young lady that we're bringing on uh, is going to uh, basically explain more of this to us and how this works. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really honored to be bringing on Lauren Ottowell on the line with us. Lauren, are you there? Hi there, Jessica. It's Lauren Hope, and I love the young lady thing. Keep going. <laughs> well, you know what, Lauren Hope. I, you know what, you are hope. You are literally hope. Lauren, tell us. Tell us your story. I feel that it's you're worthy to be famous because of the miraculous work that you're doing. You you sing. You perform. You heal depression and anxiety without you know medication. Please share with us your story. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, well, basically, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder 10 years ago. And because I wouldn't use medicine, because of exactly what you said, the side effects, um, I was asked if I want to go into a therapeutic community three days a week. And I did. And um, it was a huge amount of work. Um, very, very tough love that I got in there, healthy boundaries, huge amount of therapy. And uh, after about a year, um, I was brought to my knees. I was, in, I was literally feeling like a child again. And I had mm. a massive awakening where I let go of a huge amount of guilt from my childhood and came out with total inner peace. And um, I went on to create my theatre company, and then I went on to create my TV station. And now I do my best to go out there and campaign um, as much as possible to talk to people, to teach them that you you know how to get to a therapeutic community. Because I don't believe that you can cure this condition. You can't cure BPD, but it's manageable. It's totally manageable. But you can't do it with just medication. It's not that I'm totally against medication because everyone is different. But for me, it wasn't going to work. You have to find out where you got shocked in the first place, which is usually our childhood. Usually childhood abuse is usually the main one with a lot of people that I know. And the fact that their families don't love them and they think they do, but, you know, you just have to live with it. And then you can... Get inside that part of you, the, the little child, and you can release it. And that's what happened to me. And it was the best thing that could have happened to me in my life. It completely changed me. And um, even I've been through hell. I lost my father uh, last year. Uh, my family cut me off. I was in a wheelchair for four months because I had an accident. And in spite of it all, I stayed, uh, well, I stayed relatively sane, but never touched anything no medication uh just using my own techniques that i learned with our validation huge amount of compassion we had a 24-hour support system and we ran the community ourselves and it's really interesting that when you get a person with a serious mental disorder to take care of someone else then all of their issues disappear and they can really, they can do the job. So that they proved it in the community because we, we basically were each other's support system. It's, mm. it's an incredible, it started after the First World War because they wanted to shock back soldiers from the war. That's how it started. And you can't use medication because it numbs everything. You become completely raw, Jessica. And, and you actually start to feel like a child again. And that's when the magic can happen. You surrender and you forgive. It's about forgiveness. You, you suddenly forgive and you let it all go. And, and you just feel different. And like I say, if I hadn't gone in there, I wouldn't be here now. I, 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 would have, I wouldn't be able to cope with what life throws at me now. I wouldn't be able to cope at all, you know, um, because I learned such amazing techniques and changed my life around and and also um trying to help a lot of people and i'm going on the casey armstrong show now regularly i'm a regular guest on the wmap world most amazing people and i've been invited to go in a book 
So, which is wow, the old bestseller, yeah, called Simply Amazing on the last chapter. So, um, Casey Armstrong, you know, from Howard Stern, he is uh, he's actually doing a lot of amazing stuff for people like me. He's, he's a really great guy, and so are you, which is amazing. But yeah, my message is pure and simple. Um, if you are diagnosed with this condition, then you go and see your doctor and ask them to go, if you really, really want to get to the bottom of what's wrong with you and not just cover it up with loads and loads of medication, then ask about a therapeutic community. And they must have, they must have them in the States. They must have them in some kind of guise. But if, if you're in England... They're, they're slotted all over the place. And um, Now, how long were you in the program? How long were you in the program? Um, well, I went into the Getting Ready group for about a year, but they wouldn't put me into the community because I was too... I fought with everybody. I, I grew up in Israel. I was born in Ireland, and I grew up in Israel, so I couldn't settle. So, um, But eventually I did. So I went into the community. It was 18 months, and it was horrendous i mean it's a lot of hard work because you are going in there with all these people that are like you you know and we've all got massive issues and none of us get on and you're all you know it's very very difficult very difficult and i was a bit of a scapegoat in there because um i i couldn't perform at all i i was very different to everyone else and i kind of got bullied not physically but I got kind of bullied by the people that are in there. And, uh, but I got stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, so, yeah, I was in there for 18 months, um, a big chunk of my life. But I decided to surrender, and I knew I had to do it. I knew, you know, I'm, I'm very spiritual. I work A Course in Miracles, which is the teachings of Jesus. So I'm a Jewish Buddhist, a Judist. <laughs> I believe, you know, that we're all the same. Uh, but I knew that I had to go in here and and find a way how to learn how to live in this world. And when I came out of there, I was able to work with my theater company and have great relationships with my staff. Because we, before I went mm. in there, they used to call me the ego as landed because I was so sick. Everything was about the show, the show, the show. And I couldn't see people. I had no empathy whatsoever is a very narcissistic narcissism is the big one with me and and now I'm campaigning to kind of get out there as a singer and a, and a writer and a performer and with the book please go when that comes out because we need work you know and and to me I I, I play the part I was playing the part of Edith Diaz because she was very mentally ill and uh I would do the breakdowns on the stage, and that way you don't need to do them in life. So to me, the stage was mm. giving me the But unfortunately, there's very little at the moment. It's finding places to perform. You know, it's not easy in England. They've got this culture now where you've got to be a celebrity. So you've got to make me famous <laughs> so I can get out there. And this message is so important because... God knows, millions of people are being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. and the, the stigma is that we're liars, that we're thieves, that we're murderers. It, it's terrible, terrible. Well, I mean, let me let me read let me read a little bit about just so people can have an understanding of what borderline personality okay. disorder is. Yeah. Basically, it's it's also known as just basically an unstable personality disorder. It's a long term pattern of abnormal behavior ca characterized by unstable relationships with other people, unstable sense of self, and unstable emotions. Now, I have to say, that's like half of the world. Well, exactly. Every single person is walking around with, with a personality disorder. Everyone. It's just that when you get very stressed out, like I'd lost my mother, the menopause hit, and a lot of things started to happen. I looked around me. I don't have children. And the stress that I was under, um, they diagnosed me. Now, I'm grateful they diagnosed me because I went into the community and I was able to understand that the bad things that happened to me as a child were not my fault. Because right. We all, I think people with mental illness that have been diagnosed, they're carrying guilt. They think they're to blame 
for everything. Now, everyone's walking around with BPD um, to a certain extent. It's, you know, we all have different personalities, different beliefs that we were brought up with. And I think that people are just being diagnosed irresponsibly now. If mm -hmm. um, they don't know what to call it, they'll call it BPD. But I, to me, they, they put people in a box and they say, we're all this and we're all that. It's ridiculous. Do you know that one of the tests, Jessica, that they gave me to say that I was actually schizoid, that I had a schizoid personality, do you believe in angels? Do you believe that? Now, millions and millions of people believe in angels. You know, a little white feather falls from the sky and they say, oh, that's my dad. And I said, yes. And they said, I have a schizoid personality because I believe in angels. It's terrible what's going on. And I'm here to break that stigma. I'm here to send love mm -hmm. and compassion out there and to say, you know what? Take the initials of BPD. Turn it into something positive. Like I've had people who have said, um, my beautiful, pretty daughter, you know? And mine, somebody came up with one for me, which is breathtaking PF darling. That was one of the testimonials they gave me for my performance. So we can turn it around into something positive and celebrate your uniqueness because, do you know what? This condition gives me the opportunity to be an amazing actress. I can jump characters, and I have um, a lot of guts, you know, to start. I started my own TV station um, for vulnerable people, and, and I just get on there and make programs. And it just gives you an edge over other people because you don't just sit there and wait for life to come to you. You go out and you do it. But... I waited until I had recovered. Then I started running Moving On Theatre because what you read is about two years ago, I, I went everywhere with that show. And um, it's Je ne regrette rien by Edith Piaf. No, rien de rien. Oh, je ne regrette rien. <laughs> that, that Love was, it. Um, yeah, that was a thing. You have a beautiful voice. Well, we're wrapping up. We're getting ready to wrap up. In closing, what do you want people to know about you in specificity, and how can people get in touch with you and follow okay. you and learn more about you? Okay, well, I want people to invite me to sing and to talk so I can get the message out there. Um, they can get in. That's what I want. I want to campaign everywhere to support people like, like myself to know that they are incredible people, unique beings, and they're not uh, crazy. It's just a disorder, and it can be managed with the proper treatment and the proper compassion and validation. You have to teach your families how to, to manage this as well. Anyway, I know a lot about it. It's going in a book. Um, to get in touch with me, you can contact me, Lauren with an E, at movingontv.uk. And everyone is welcome to tell me about their dreams because I put them on my TV station. Or they can get in touch with me on Facebook, uh, Lauren with an E, Hope. Yes, I did put the word Hope in front of my name because I took that on after I recovered. So it's Lauren Hope, Lauren with an E. Or they can go on Twitter and they can contact me at Moving On Theatre or at Moving On TV. And like I say, my message is clear as anything. I want to go out there and educate everyone and show people that I am not a thief, I am not a liar, I am not a murderer. I, I have been married for nearly 24 years to the same man, <laughs> completely the opposite of what the message has been put out there. And That's people beautiful. Like normal people, just normal people, and we ha I have to be on the stage. It helps me to stay sane because then I can scream and shout and not get thrown in a cell because the police will throw you in the cell if you're having a panic attack here. On, you know, they'll throw you in the cell. They don't treat wow. people with respect. So my whole campaign, as I said, uh, Jessica, is to give people back their self-respect. Um, they must take care of themselves and each other, but they must, try to get counselling with their family or friends, you know, and if you don't have a family, 
because a lot of the time our families can be really horrible, like mine. You have to create your own tribe, your own support system, and I'm there. Email me. I'm always there. You know, sometimes when I go on and I do my talks after the show, people come to me after and they say, wow, they said, um, you took my mind off my problems because the show is so good, but now I know I can tell someone, I can go to the doctor I, I can't believe that people don't know that this incredible thing exists and it's free. It's on the national health. It's free. And, and, and the fact that no one does, knows about it, the media don't seem to want to push it. They just seem to want to push drugs. So anyway. Well, Please thank you so much for interviewing with us today. You gave some very powerful information. I don't understand see why you're not out there more. People, you need to really get up with this lady because she has an amazing message, and there is help for you, folks. You don't have to do this alone. You don't have to walk around with the stigma. You don't have to feel suicidal. You don't have to be depressed. There are programs out there for you, and if you guys just find Lauren Hope, find her. Get find up with her, me. talk to her, yeah. and find out what <laughs> she's done, and she can help you do the same. I have to say, I wish I knew about you before I went on and got a degree doing this because I would have saved <laughs> myself and my clients a lot of money. So, Lauren, I just well, want to thank you for being a change agent. Yeah. I want to thank you for being who you are, and I want to thank you for taking the time to be on WKIM today because you are an amazing so lady, and you have a beautiful voice. In closing, why don't you sing a little bit for us? Guys, you're going to also hear her song. We're going to hear her song as well. But live on the line, just sing a little tidbit for us again, and then we're going to wrap up. Please do. Love me. If the sun tumbles from the sky and the sea suddenly run dry I'm on Judy Garland a little bit, you know. Has anyone ever told you that? I wish, yeah. Um, yeah, a little bit. I think because we, we sing with in our hearts, and if I hadn't gone through all that pain, I couldn't sing like that. <laughs> yeah, she she was going through some things in her life, too. And, you know, her music yeah. was just amazing, and you are amazing, and your voice is amazing. We do have a recording, folks, that we're going to play her song uh, coming up next on WKIM. Lauren, can I tell you that we love you? We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you. And thank we you so thank much, you Jessica. so much. You. And we thank invite you. you to come back anytime. We'd love to have you. We love you, we love you, we love you. And we don't normally say that. We don't normally say that on the radio. Really? We love someone. Wow, but I you. have to say, anytime, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Your voice is amazing. Your spirit is amazing. And just from your singing just now, you left a wonderful impression on me. And I love it. And I just felt even more in love with you as a person and as what you bring to the world, just hearing you sing. And I hear you your passion. Weekend, and I so want to just acknowledge you. For, for, for being who you are. Thank you. I just need the media in England to agree with you. <laughs> That's okay. It starts, well. it starts one yeah. place, and we're appreciative of that, and it will get around. So, again, we just want to thank you, and uh, we will share this with one of our buddies that we have in England as well um, and Wonderful. put you in touch with him. So uh, thank you so much again, and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... Lauren, you want to go ahead and introduce your song that we have the MP3 of it? Yes, it's called I Wish You Peace, and this is my classical voice. I'm a trained soprano, um, and it's about uh, bringing us all together, regardless of our race, 
or our culture. It's all about peace in the world, and I really hope it touches people's hearts. And if they want to find out more about me, as I say, uh, buy my music or anything, please get in touch with me. I'll sing anywhere. I'm open to suggestions, and you can use my music anywhere as well, as long as it spreads love and peace. Thank you. Thank you, guys. This is a Jam Glam exclusive. Thank you, Lauren. Have a wonderful day. This is a Jam Glam exclusive, folks, and after this, we're going to listen to our ad. Thank you, guys. Have a great day, guys. Take care, folks. Bye. This is a Jam Glam exclusive. Jam Glam exclusive on WKIM. 61.1 FM on iHeartRadio with Kimberly Jessica. <laughs> Kimberly Jessica. Kimberly Jessica. Kimberly Jessica. Kimberly Jessica.
Are you a model, entrepreneur, actress, or everyday girl looking to legitimize, expand, or build your brand in a famous high-gloss fashion magazine like Glamour or Vogue? Face it, unless you're one of the Jenner sisters or one of the Hajids, it's almost impossible to get into one of these mags. Take your photos from nowhere on social media to fame with us. Work with our highly trained freelance beauty reporters to get guaranteed placement in Vogue or Glamour for a fraction of the cost. Call us now at 424-262. 1596.